GW News at Sunrise. Today, a famous figure in the Portland wrestling scene is set to appear at Multnomah County Court on murder charges. Everything we know about the wrestler's past and the case coming up against him in our top story. We also have a follow up to one of yesterday's top stories. Idaho's first execution in more than a decade didn't happen on Wednesday because the volunteer medical team assigned with delivering the lethal drugs botched the injection. What that means for convicted killer Thomas Eugene Creech coming up in just a few minutes. And today only comes around every four years. That's because today is Leap Day. Head on Sunrise, our Chris McGinnis will explain why we tack on an extra day on the end of the February month every couple of years or so. The last February 29th we lived through actually sticks out in my mind. It was the day after the first documented case of COVID-19 oh, in Oregon. Right? Yeah, okay. oh, first right. case in Oregon was the 28th. We had a, a station party on the 29th, and I just remember everyone standing around like, should we be here? Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. touch anything. Anyways, that sorry, was an sorry to bring day. up 2020. <laughs> Let's we're, talk about 2024. Yeah, we're, we're adding a day today, right? Should we all in favor of subtracting a day next time? What's up with this adding day? <laughs> if that gets us to the weekend faster, I'm in favor of your idea. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, well, the march of the cold weather is on. Radar really active. We have showers starting to move out through the into the Columbia Basin. And look at this. See how the snow gets it comes down, it kind of encroaches into the valley. So that's, you can visually see the snow level in real time. They're actually getting lower and lower. But for now, up and down I-5, it is all rain. Longview, Portland, down in the sand. The snow, uh, rain in the gorge along 84. The snow in the Cascades, winter storm warning in play. The snow over the Coast Range, winter weather advisory in play. And some of the hilltops that stretch into the Willamette Valley right there down in wine country starting to pick up some snow at elevation as well. Temperatures, Sandy, radar has been showing you've been getting snow in the air. You are holding at 37. Now, these temperatures are in the process of going down. Right now, 41, West Lynn, 43, downtown Portland, down to 39 in Forest Grove, down to 39 out in Sheridan, and let me say down to 32 in Silverton, 36 in Estacada. All right, generally, it's gonna be rain today in the valley with temperatures somewhere around 40 throughout a good chunk of the day. But at any given point, you could find a snow shower mix in the air, that chance of seeing mostly snow in the air actually arrives overnight tonight. Chris, lots going on today. So we put that extra day in February just so we can have an extra day of winter, right? <laughs> Let's go south of town. I-5 in the Tualatin area. This is obviously way down near sea level. Uh, plenty of road spray. The vapor trails just uh, flying off the cars here. That's the southbound commute near the 205 interchange. We'll take you over to the Sylvan Hill Highway 26 up near 750, 750 feet. Remember a couple of days ago, we did have snow uh, in the morning at Sylvan. And so that'll be one of the cameras that we watched here in the metro area. Uh, just rain there for now, thankfully. And the I-5 drive over the interstate bridge is pretty wide open. Guys, here's the good news. No crashes, no unexpected freeway delays just yet. All right, Chris, thanks for that update. Let's get to our top story this hour. A former professional wrestler accused of killing his wife earlier this month in, in Southeast Portland is officially charged with murder. And he'll make his first court appearance this afternoon. Devin Haskins is live in our newsroom with a look back at those cases and the charges. Devin. Yeah, Portland police charged William Albert Haynes with second degree murder and unlawful use of a gun. Police said Haynes had been in the hospital in police custody getting medical treatment that was unrelated to the shooting or interaction with police, which is why the delay from the time of the murder to the time he was charged. It was three weeks ago on February 8th, Portland police went to Haynes's home in the Lentz neighborhood for a possible shooting. Inside, they found his 85-year-old wife, Jeanette B. Craft, dead. Haynes, who was 70, performed as a wrestler under the name Billy Jack Haynes. He was widely known in national wrestling circles in the mid-1980s, most notably in the World Wrestling Federation and WrestleMania III. He debuted in 1982 and retired from wrestling in 1996. Haynes will make his first court appearance this afternoon at 2 p.m. Those court appearances are usually pretty quick. It's where the charges are to write against them, and then a future court date is set. Drew. All right, Devin, we appreciate that update this morning from the newsroom. Also in the news this morning, the state of Idaho botched yesterday's scheduled execution of one of the country's longest serving death row inmates. We're talking about 73 year old Thomas Eugene Creech, who was convicted of five murders in three states, although he's actually been linked to as many as 11 deaths altogether, including two here in Oregon. He was set for execution by lethal injection yesterday morning, but the team delivering that injection wasn't able to administer the lethal drugs because they couldn't access a vein. The execution team was made up entirely of volunteers, although 
According to Idaho execution protocols, each volunteer was required to have at least three years of medical experience. Creech's death warrant is now expired, which means the state of Idaho will have to obtain a new one in order to attempt his execution again. We still don't have a trial date for the University of Idaho murder case. Brian Koberger is accused of murdering four university students in 2022. During yesterday's hearing, a judge denied his lawyer's request of allowing more investigators to view certain genetic evidence. The judge did, however, set a new date to hear more arguments on where the trial should be held. That hearing is set for April 17th. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office is searching for suspects in an attempted carjacking and shooting that left a man hurt. It happened three weeks ago at a gas station on Sunnyside Road. KGW's Catherine Cook has more after speaking to the man who was shot and his sister. To actually shoot somebody, when you hear that gunshot, I couldn't imagine what they all were thinking. Nicole Dransfeld is thinking about her little brother, 22-year-old Ben Tibbetts. It was just before 1 a.m., February 8th. Ben and a buddy pulled into the 76 station on Sunnyside Road in Clackamas. By phone, Ben told us a group of guys approached them at gunpoint and demanded his keys. When he refused, Ben says one guy pistol whipped him, then shot him in the hip. It was the scariest thing to hear ever. Before paramedics arrived, Ben says gas station employees wrapped a t-shirt around his wound to stop the bleeding. Nicole is thankful for them. The workers here are awesome, and the, I mean, they, they helped a lot. They, they, they did more than they needed to do, and I'm sure it was scary for everybody, but they were totally there for my brother. In the weeks since the shooting, Nicole says her brother has been healing slowly. She says he'll miss at least two months of work while he recovers, which will hurt him financially on top of medical bills. She set up this GoFundMe to help offset those costs. I wanted to focus on healing and not being so stressed out about money. As for the people who hurt Ben. I just don't get why. They're still out there. Nicole believes someone knows who they are and what they did. If somebody hurt somebody that you loved, like they hurt my brother, then you would do the right thing and say something. In Clackamas, Katherine Cook, KGW News. Today is February 29th or Leap Day, a special day that literally only happens once every four years. Fun fact, about 5 million people have a birthday on Leap Day. That's about one out of 8 billion on the planet. Oh. The chances of being oh. born today, one out of 1,461. And coming up at our next half hour, Chris McGinnis has more on why we have leap years in the first place. And he was diving deep into this yesterday. I was watching him reading a script and doing math and all the things I can't do. So I actually start to feel the pain in my head as you mentioned all those numbers. Calculating yeah. it. <laughs> a lot of numbers <laughs> flying around in that story. But it's a special day, right? So, I mean, don't do housework today, right? I mean, treat yourself. Just kick back, relax a little bit. I never consider February 29th to be all that special. It's just another roadblock to the weekend, Rod. Let's get through it. Well, I'm not doing housework today. <laughs> do you ever do housework? Uh, that's. I'm in charge of this particular segment, China. Thank you. <laughs> get to it then. <laughs> all right, we have uh, rain. Uh, excuse me. I meant to say cold weather shooting down. All the speckledness on the infrared satellite picture is cold cumulus clouds in this case. And we will start to break up what's been steady moisture overnight and still at this time. We'll start to break it up into more of showers, but there will be a numerous shower feed just continuing to come in. It's pretty wet, mostly rain on, well, in fact, entirely rain on I-5 from Seattle down through Portland all the way down to Eugene. I said this earlier in the show, you can watch the encroachment of the snow, the white on the radar getting lower and lower. So that's a sign that the snow levels are lowering. The air is continuing to get colder. It is rain along the uh, lower elevations, I-84, out into the gorge. Radar is showing snow in Sandy and really most of the Cascade foothills in the air right now. And we've got snow even on the west slope of the uh, Coast Range. Coast Range temperatures are going to be hitting 32 here soon, so we could start seeing sticking snow in the coming hours over some of the Coast Range highways. Right now we've got some heavier rain moving into Portland. There are the Chehala Mountains right there picking up some snow. Here's Sandy Nesticata, and look how, I mean, by the time you get into Corbett in the gorge, you've got snow at least just up in elevation. There's that U.S. 26 Quartz Creek on the west slope of the Coast Range, now down to 33 degrees, and that is snow in the air. So travelers definitely take the time to check out uh, the cameras and the conditions and be prepared for winter weather as you head out today if you're going up in elevation at all. Right now, we're, uh, temperatures are still falling. We're just getting into the colder air. 41 in Salem, 44 in Portland, 42 Kelso. 
Peninsula. Newport is now down to 39. It's above freezing in the Dow's 45 and Ben's at 43. Future cast shows at 9 o'clock this morning. There are the West Hills. So anything that's up in elevation a little bit, we'll start to see a, a mix of showery precipitation, although ground temperatures will be above freezing. Now we get more into the heat of the day, 130. Now you see it's rain in the flats of the valley with the snow levels retreating up higher. And then now we're getting into overnight tonight. And then here's Friday morning at 730. There's a little low that we're watching that could pull some colder weather in. So here's 10 o'clock Friday morning showing a snow rain mix in Portland rain down in Salem and then back to mostly rain at 2.30 in the afternoon. So you get the idea, little cat and mouse game with the low snow levels. It's all snow shower activity east of the Cascades. This is the wider future cast movie at 6.30 this evening. Uh, highs are going to be generally in the mid 40s today, Friday, Saturday, low temperatures close to but generally above freezing unless you get up in elevation. And then we've got uh, a quieter weather pattern, but still some sun and showers to start Next week, you know, like the system real quick that we had that came in Sunday night into Monday um, as a forecaster, it's tough to tell if you're at 1000 feet, if you get much or not. Um, the true uniform snow level for really stacking up snow is probably closer to 1500 feet. Back to you. All right, Rod. Thanks for that update.